Okay, so a uh, quick announcement. Next week, there will be no class uh, for President's Day, and then we will resume class on the 20th, and that's when we will be going full force into our wave parser unit. Um, however, I know that, <laughs> yeah, I know that a lot of people um, in this class are not as familiar with C, C, uh, C++. I would recommend watching a few videos on it in the meantime. Uh, so in lecture one, I posted a link to, um, where is it? To uh, how to set up the C++ environment. Um, and this is the yeah, computer science 16 tutorial. So, uh, and they talk about how to do it on Windows. And so, yeah, there's a couple options. Um, I would say don't use VirtualBox. It's a terrible idea. I don't know why it's on that. Uh, yeah, so either you can connect to Cecil or you can um, install a bash terminal. And so I have, I have git bash and git bash is really cool. So I can do, yeah, I can do GCC and I, or, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I could, I actually know. Okay, that's good. I'll get yeah. that. So yeah, I recommend doing git bash and then installing uh, Ming GW. <clears throat> uh, and also I, th I think it comes with like make commands. So you can, you can run make and uh, yeah, helpful. Okay, yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll repost this tutorial. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, so uh, last week was kind of just an overview of pixel data and palettes and how like images like PNG and GIF, they don't actually store like for every single pixel, they don't store the entire full RGB value. Instead, they store like a little ID, uh, like a, a pixel data item. And then later that pixel data is found in the palette table and the palette table converts this pixel data into the actual color. And uh, the whole reason that we do this is to save a lot of space. Uh, so yeah, um, so that was the theme of last week, but this week kind of doesn't really have a theme. And um, like our, Yeah, so I said here that the theme is reverse engineering strategies, which is just like very, very broad. Um, so this is kind of just meant to be like, a, all right, like we finished the Super Mario Bros unit. I'm just going to throw like a bunch of random crap at you and hopefully some of it will stick. So yeah, so uh, there are two exercises today. Um, if you don't finish both of them, absolutely no worries. Uh, try to finish at least one of them. Uh, exercise one is the really cool one. Ex uh, Cool. Exercise one is the one where you get to learn a lot of stuff. Exercise two is the one where you can actually show people that you did a lot of cool stuff. So exercise two uh, looks a lot cooler to people who like aren't familiar with this. But exercise one is where you're going to really like um, become more familiar with binary hacking. So I, I highly recommend doing exercise one. But exercise two is a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, yes. So yeah, what we're going to do is actually create our own IPS file. So, um, so here's uh, a IPS file that I created. So let me show you. So this is a um, yeah, this is Super Mario Bros. And but um, up here we can see that I changed the name to Ethan, and that's the only change I did. Is I just changed up there to say Ethan. <clears throat> and so here I have my IPS patch, and now we can open this in a hex editor. Yeah, um, and so something kind of cool is we can see over here the ASCII interpretation of it. And the ASCII interpretation of it says patch. And then at the very, the last three characters are EOF. EOF generally means end of file. And that's a very important acronym that you should all memorize, end of file. So um, yeah, so, so wait, well, I have a question. So why do you think EOF is at the end of this file? Like, why, why don't they just leave it off? Any thoughts? Well, yeah, wait, let's think about this. So why the heck is there an EOF? Because um, like another way you could just have an end of file is you could just like end your file, but instead it chooses to write out the letters EOF. And um, yeah, I mean, most files actually don't have this EOF, but it can be very helpful if you're doing like a, a loop and you want to just see like where the loop is going to end. Like let's say like you have, um, so we might call them like chunks. If you have like a bunch of chunks one after another and you wanna know when do the chunks stop? Like, okay, so actually we should stop reading this particular line as a chunk. And actually this particular line says end of file. There mean that, and that means that we just stop reading 
um, starting now. And, um, and so one really cool thing you can do now is now you can actually just start like typing more. So you can say like end the file, but then we can go and add more text. It might be like, hey, like this file is actually like this and that. So we can actually like, um, I think, yeah. So like we could go and type a bunch of stuff right here. So I'm adding like a bunch more characters, like zero, 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 zero. And we could type in text. And so maybe in this file, we could say, um, we could like write out the description of what the file does. Or maybe we could like sign our name or we could put like a link to our GitHub or something. So, and the file is just kind of useful. Basically means like stop reading this as binary data. Uh, yeah, so it's so a kind of a cool strategy. And um, but, so let's actually, let's try to figure out like what, what these numbers are. So it says like zero, 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 seven, six, five, zero, 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 five. Like this is kind of, it's like seemingly random data. And um, yeah, so let's try to make some sense out of it. So let's open up the, um, the ROM file in Goldfinger. Okay. And let's uh, also open up the table so we can see the characters, yeah. So here we go. And let's scroll down. So here we can see um, is where I wrote Ethan into the code. And so usually this said Mario, but instead this now says Ethan. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so let's look a little bit. So it says 0E, 1D, 11, 0A, 17. So do we see that anywhere in this file? So, so 0E, oh, look at that. Okay, 1D, 1D. 11, 11, 0A, zero 0A, zero 17, 17. So look at that. Um, by looking at this file, we see like the entire change that we made. So a while ago, I said that IPS files don't actually save any of the data that Nintendo wrote. It only ever saves the data that you wrote yourself. So, um, yeah, so it says um, Ethan in this file, and it says Ethan in this file. And, uh, but that doesn't really explain like what the other numbers mean. So here we see like a 0, 0, 0, 005. Does anyone have an idea for what this might be? Like think, why, why is the number five important here? <clears throat> so let me ask it again. So, so we um, are changing, making a change to this file we're saying like, okay, so these, so E-T-H-A-N needs to be put into the Mario file. And, but for some reason, it also says 05 in front of that. So why does it say 05 when it goes and puts in E-T-H-A-N? Five characters? Yeah. Wait, that's, yeah, exactly. But not, not necessarily five characters, but like five oh. bytes. Okay. Right. Like that's how big it is. It's like the size of the data that you're replacing. Right? So zero 05 means, okay, I'm inserting some data or I'm gonna replace some data. And the length of the data that I'm replacing is five. Okay, cool. So now, um, so let's look back here. So, okay, so um, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, cool. <clears throat> um, but now let's, let's look at this. So this says the offset is seven, six, five. So do we see that anywhere up here? And I hope it, it is like very obvious. Yeah, call them seven six seven five. So, so um, let's now like look at this again. So, <clears throat> come on. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay. So, so this file has P A T C H as the first five characters, and then after that, it has three characters. And what do these three characters represent? And we, we kind of just said it, it's this, what is this? Oh, the location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so first we have patch, and then after that we have the location of the data that we're gonna replace or the offset of the data we're gonna replace. And then what's the next two bytes? It was zero five here. What, what do these represent? Bytes. Yeah, it, uh, the size. Okay, so the first five bytes mean patch. The next three bytes mean offset. The next two bytes mean <clears throat> um, the size. And now 
the next five bytes will be the data that's being overwritten. And why is it five bytes? Because your name has five characters? Um, yes, but like, like what, what would happen or if you're I you're changing like, Mario? What would happen if I changed this to zero six instead of zero five? Uh, it'll overwrite six bytes. Yeah, exactly. So it'll it'll end up reading six bytes now. Or if I did if I did like zero one, now it'll only read one byte. So so the reason it, it is five characters is specifically because we tell it that it is five characters right here. So if one, we could say it's like, like whatever, 56, 34, this is like a huge number. And we can say, yeah, okay, the amount of bytes that we're overriding is this many. And therefore you can expect that um, we're going to give you 56, 34 different characters to overwrite. But of course we are only giving it five in this file. So um, it would probably crash and wouldn't work, but yeah. So, um, and then after that, it would either repeat and like add, um, find like somewhere else that we're changing the data. Uh, and it would just keep going, keep going, finding more and more places to replace the data until it reaches end of file, and which is E O F. And then it'll just stop. Even if the file has a bunch more data, this file could be like a gigabyte in size, doesn't matter. Um, the second it reaches end of file, then it just stops reading. And uh, so I, I actually, I posted the file format to this, um, type of file, which yeah, IPS. And <clears throat> so yeah, it says the structure. So an IPS file starts with the magic number patch, meaning it starts with like the characters patch, 50, 41, 54, 30. Yeah, so we can see um, 50, 41, 54, 43, sorry, yeah. Um, followed by a series of hunks. I think it was supposed to say chunks uh, and an end of file marker EOF. And look at that, yeah. So it uh, has a bunch of chunks and then it uh, ends with E, F. Uh, and then so um, yeah, chunks consist of a three byte offset. So like where it is in the location, um, followed by a two byte length of the payload and then the payload itself. So this, is, this is really cool. This is, so this is the first time that we have dissected a binary file completely to where we've understood it 100%. And this is what we're going to be doing in the wave parser unit is we're going to be going through a wave file and Byte by byte, and say, "Oh, actually, okay. So this is um, representing the um, the bit rate, and then this is representing the sample rate, and then this is doing that, and this is doing that." Um, yeah. So this is the first file format that we have dissected. So congratulations, everyone. Now you're you're pros at the IPS file format. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so you will. Um, so for the first exercise, you will be. Uh, adding a hat to Goombas, um, but uh, but only by editing this um, this IPS file that you have to download. So you download this IPS file, and then um, you have to edit it. So you can't actually go and edit um, the ROM file in Goldfinger. You must edit the IPS directly. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. But, so, but let's look a little closer. So, in exercise one, you will add a hat to Goombas. And so I have a, an example of what this looks like. And here we go. So this Goomba, I put a little block on top of it. And all of the Goombas have blocks on top of them. And this was done in just two bytes. So the IPS file is, is very simple. Um, you just, so let me, let me open it up. So you'll be opening this up in Goldfinger. And yeah, so it'll start out and it'll say patch. And then um, I have FFFF, which means that you need to replace this. And so wait, okay, what, are, what, are, what does FFFF mean? Like what, what do we put in here? Do, do you guys remember? The, the byte offset, right? Yeah, the offset, the, the location of where it is in the file. And then after that, it says zero two. And why is it zero two? Because you're editing two bytes. Yeah, we're editing two bytes. And then, okay, and then we have FFFF. And what do these bytes represent? The things we're over, like writing. Yeah, exactly. So, um, 
yeah, this is where we will put in the bytes that we want to change it to. And then after that, it just says end of file. So your goal will be to add or to, to change these five bytes, all these FFFF or FFFFFFFFFFF. Uh, so yeah, just, just five bytes. And, um, and this will make the Goombas have hats on them. Uh, yeah, but, but you are not allowed to add any sprites into the game. You can only use existing sprites. So um, that's kind of strange. So last week, we found, we, we discovered how to edit sprites and we learned what sprites are. But this week, we're going to um, yeah, be putting sprites, like we're going to be making sprites into tile data now. Um, because remember, so first we have to go from like pixel data to sprites and then to tile data where um, sprites are made up of pixel data and then tile data is made up of sprites. So there's like different levels of abstraction. So here I have opened uh, up the game in an emulator and let me just quickly go and pause it. Okay. And now um, in the debug menu, I'm going to open the PPU viewer and <clears throat> Um, and so, yeah, last week, if you remember, the way that we edited palettes in the game is we would search for instance in, instances where you would have uh, all these numbers that were like next to each other in the code. So if we wanted to edit Mario's color, we would have to search through the code and see wherever there was 16, uh, 16 27, 18. And if ever there were th those three bytes in a line, it probably means that that was Mario's palette. Uh, and, and so now the question is like, okay, um, yeah, I'm going to ask you guys this. So how can we find, um, so moving away from palettes and now moving to sprites, how do you think we could find in the code where the mushrooms tile data is? Oh, you find the color of the mushroom. Sorry, say that again. Like based on the color of the mushroom. Color of the mushroom. For that. So I think that would be a good way to change the color, but um, editing the the tile might be a little bit difficult. So well, okay, so what what is a what is a palette made up of? Different colors. Yeah, colors. Um, and so and then what is a tile made up of? Uh, sprites. Yeah, sprites. So. So therefore, for the sprite. exactly, yeah. So we should probably, yeah, we should look for the sprites. And so we can, um, let's change it to the mushroom color. There we go. So um, we'll have to go through and look and see if there's ever a mushroom sprite. And it looks like right here is a mushroom sprite. So it says 76, and then 77, 78, 79. So it looks like these four sprites are all the sprites that are, um, yeah, that, that represent or, uh, th these are all the mushroom sprites. And so therefore, we should expect that the mushroom tile should be a combination of these four sprites. So yeah, so, so I don't know. Let's just, that's, that's our hypothesis. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So let's go and open this up in a text editor and search for the data. So um, we're going to open up, uh, let's make coffee. We're going to call this mushroom. Two properties make it not read only. Okay. With code. Okay. So yeah, we want to search for 76, 78, 79. Sorry, wait, 76 through 79 all in a row. So yeah, let's do 76, 77, 78, 79. Okay, wait, so look at Right here, there is an instance where those four bytes are all in a row. And let's see, so is there ever another instance? And yeah, so there's another instance, but it's like right after it. You see that? So it goes this, and then right after it, it goes like this. And my guess, my hypothesis, is that this is actually the sprite data, um, or the, the tile data for the red mushroom. And then maybe this one might be the tile data for the green mushroom, maybe. Uh, but I don't know. Let's, so let's try changing it. Let's change these all to like something really gross. Let's just do like um, 7, 76, 76, 76, 76. Let's just change all of them. So now let's save this. 
And let's see if that works. So we, we just found an instance where that might have been the, the mushroom sprite data, and we changed all the sprites to just be um, the same sprite one after another. So now if we open this, let's go grab a mushroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some nice cheese. <laughs> yeah, basically. Cool. Okay. And uh, yeah, so if we want, we can now go and change um, this to like something else. I think uh, the Goomba sprite, wait, oh, I guess we can look it up. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's how you find, that, that's one strategy you could use to find the, um, yeah, the, the, the tile data. But I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to show you another strategy you can use. Um, because yeah, well, let's say you weren't sure if that's actually how the tile was going to be arranged. Maybe you you thought like the tile was going to be arranged like top to bottom. So it should be like 76, 78, uh, 77, 79. So like, um, like arranged like that in a row. So uh, yeah, so one thing you can do is you could open up this disassembly. And so, um, so yeah, so here's the code for the entire game. Nintendo could not write each byte by hand. They did not write, make the entire game this way. Instead, what they would do is they would write it in 6502 assembly. So this is 6502 assembly. And uh, it, it's kind of like a, a coding language, except it is extremely bare bones. Like there's no if statements, no for loops, no nothing. Um, all you have, like the basic tools you have are just load data, store data, and add, multiply, subtract. And most of the time, you don't even have divide because divide is so hard. So like really, you only have like those few. Oh, and, and, and of course, you also have branch and jump, which are kind of the same thing. Um, so so you, you just, um, Nintendo had to make this entire game without using any like C standard if statements. They had to write it all by using just like loads and stores. And, uh, and we can actually see, so here is a fan disassembly of, um, yeah, some, a, a group of fans took the code of the video game and then turned it back into assembly. So this is always all written by fans, but now it makes it a lot easier to kind of figure out what's going on in this game. Because we can see like they commented every single line. So they say, okay, so game menu routine. Okay, check to see if player pressed uh, the, only the start button. Check to see if it's A plus star was pressed. Okay, if not, select uh, check select button. And so it does this. Um, so th this is all just, this is crazy. Like this is all just for the start menu. Um, and it's just basically like, did they press start or stop? <laughs> uh, or I'm sorry, did, did they press start um, A or select? So very, uh, yeah. Uh, it was very hard to write this this game. And you could probably write this entire game in um, probably like a, a thousand lines of C code. Um, but they wrote it in, oh my gosh, wait. They, they wrote it in uh, 16,000 lines of assembly. So yeah, it, it, I'm trying to drill in that. This is really, really hard to write, um, but, they, but they did it this way. And it's actually a lot easier. It's significantly easier to write than hexadecimal. So, um, okay, but, but now, so what we can do is we could actually just search for like Goomba. And oh, okay, look at this. So actually it pulls it right up. So here says enemy graphics table. And so we see like, oh, so 70, 71, 72, 73. So um, yeah, so we can see like this is all in a line. So we know that if we want the Goomba uh, graphic, then basically we would just need to search in memory when FC, FC, 7, 0, 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3 is all in a line. Um, so wait, that's a really good point, Sammy. So yeah, uh, C, I believe, wait, uh, let me look it up. Hold on. Uh, I mean, C++ was 79. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so C should be even older. It's 70, 72? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so C was around, um, but the reason why they chose to write it in 6502 assembly is because C was very slow back then. And, I see. Yeah. Um, what, 6502 assembly, that way you could actually tell your CPU to do very specific things because this game was, um, it was very important that it ran at 60 frames per second. 
right. so that when you yeah um versus computers you know if you like click like oh open calculator it doesn't really you don't really care if it takes you like a couple seconds for it to open or as in this game it's crucial the second you press a you instantly jump and the second you move left and touch an enemy you instantly like die it's um so they had to be they had to write in super low level language to go as fast as possible whereas now like you can write entire video games in python and it'll work perfectly fine uh, yeah in, insane um oh it's the cpu game. yeah C yeah yeah at the time okay yeah um because especially like they had to fit it in this tiny little nes container um and make it affordable like you couldn't I see. most of the computers in this time you know the apple yeah. II, um you know it was like yeah it was actually fifteen thousand dollars or something before windows too yeah uh the nes was um 1980 like something uh yeah uh 1983 um but yeah they had to make it 300 dollars. they had to make a computer a whole entire computer three hundred dollars when most computers were over ten thousand dollars whereas right. my laptop is a, a pretty good laptop and that's only like fifteen hundred so um yeah insane anyways uh yeah so so this disassembly uh can really help you go and see what the hexadecimal data is and uh, and can help you like search around in this uh, in this code for uh, yeah for things. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is yeah okay so that is exercise one. So exercise one is um, trying to add a hat to the Goomba, and I'm being very vague about it because I want it to be a fun exercise where you take kind of everything that you've learned in this class uh, and apply it. So exercise two though is a little bit more fun. So we're going to be editing the title screen of Mario. All right, uh, but first, before we just like jump into the super awesome software that like does it for us, let's at least kind of see like, um, let's see if we can use our reverse engineering skills to figure out kind of what's going on. So uh, step one, so we got a copy of vanilla file. Title. While we're writing, um, so let's open it in an emulator. And open the PPU viewer. So, um, so if you remember, so like we can see the the mushroom sprite says seventy six, seventy seven, seventy eight, seventy nine. Uh, the Goomba sprite says um, 70, 71, 72, 73. And um, yeah, so, so each of these sprites have different values. And, um, but you can see there's actually like two different tables. Like here, this has the value of 00, zero and this one also has the value of 00. zero. So it's kind of weird why there are um, two different tiles um, or two different sprite tables. And uh, the reason for that is because of the way that the NES worked. The NES just had always two different um, tables that it would pull from. The first one was the sprite tables, it's the sprite table, and uh, the second table was the background table. So these are all responsible for like the um, like the bushes or the mountains, the bushes, the clouds, the text, anything that is like on the front of the screen, or um, or I guess or on the back of the screen, like anything that is not like a, a moving object that needs to have physics. Um, so physics objects are these guys, background objects are these guys. Okay, uh, and then so let's open up. Okay, uh, so let me search. So uh, we can see that, so Super Mario Bros, um, we can see the sprites down here for it kind of crammed in here. And we can see like, actually they probably reused a lot of these sprites. Like we can see like this sprite, similar to this sprite, similar to this sprite. So they probably ended up reusing a lot. So it looks like the entire menu was kind of just scrunched down into just this little section right here. So that's really, really good for compression, but it makes it a little bit harder to figure out what's going on. But um, yeah, so I don't know, let's just try searching for some of these values. So let's see if there's ever a time where D0 is next to D1, because that probably means that we're like, maybe we found like the, the top of the M or something. 
So let's find so d0, d1. And look at this. So we found something. So d0, d1, d8, d8, de, d1. So it looks like this actually might be the title screen right here. Because like we have a bunch of these d's right here. And all of these values are d's. And then some of them wrap over to e's. So yeah, we see a bunch of d's, a bunch of d's, a bunch of d's. Um, yeah, a few e's, a few e's. So yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that this is actually the title screen data. And I'm not sure how go long it goes on for. But let's, let's try to figure out like what it means. So, so yeah, OK, so we see d0. So OK, yeah, so d0, d1, and d8. So this guy, so honestly, it kind of looks like it's reading like the top of this right here. So like soup, um, and then there's another U, and then DE, what, what is DE? Yeah, it kind of looks like the P right there, and then D1. Um, uh, yeah, maybe it looks like the P is going down. So um, yeah, so it looks like this kind of section right here is this like, um, this section right here. Um, yeah, and if we like keep going, but then we see two zero. It's like, what the heck? What does two zero mean? And uh, yeah, so like we can we can check what like, two zero is, and we see that it's W. But well, there's no W on the screen, so this, this is probably something kind of whack. So, just curious, what does anyone have an idea of what this two zero might represent? Does anyone have a guess? And it's like completely wrong answers are allowed. And you can private message me and guess if you don't want to be embarrassed. Change line. That's that's really interesting. Yeah, so kind of like an end of file sort of thing, except it's just next line. Or is it just the amount that you overwrite? The the amount that you overwrite? That's that's another yeah. good idea, yeah. Rather, uh, actually, mm -hmm. two zeros in bytes, maybe not. Because yeah. that's like, what, 2 times 16, 32? Um, right, so, or, uh, yeah, so. Well, anyway, any other ideas? Those are some good ideas. Let's, let's just get a bunch of ideas. So two zero, yes, yeah, so we might, might be the number of bytes that are like in that line, might be like moving on to the next line. What's something else? Like, so uh, here's something kind of interesting. It looks like the, the title screen kind of has different colors. So maybe like the two zero, what do you think the two zero might represent? The shadow? Shadow? Oh, you mean like uh, these the shadows? Shadow. Yeah. Yeah, um, maybe. So I'm gonna be honest, I actually have no idea what two zero means. <laughs> but, <laughs> but these are fantastic questions and these are the exact questions that you should be asking yourself if you're looking in the code of this. Um, and so my hypothesis, I didn't actually check this, I'm guessing that two zero uh, in C six might correspond with maybe like the y and x position of where this data starts on the screen. Maybe that's my hypothesis. Maybe it um, is actually like which palette you're using because um, the one player game, two player game, top. This is also considered to be on the title screen. So maybe. Um, and so we can see that this is using a different palette than this is. So yeah, maybe the uh, the text um, is it, like you can change which palette. So maybe we can change this to be like the same palette as this. Uh, no idea. But uh, yeah, I move C six. But then so wait, Sammy had a, a good point. So <clears throat> he said maybe it's the number of bytes that are in the line. So let's go and and check how many bytes we have until we reach this two zero. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what's ten in hex? Sixteen. Wait. Uh, huh? Wait, what? Wait. Uh, sorry. Ten in hex. Like ten. Wait. Ten in binary converted to hex. You did it the other way. A. Yeah. A. A. Exactly. Yeah. So look at this. Zero A. Whoa! What the? <laughs> so so that's one thing I noticed right away. So zero A, and we have A, and then we have zero A. And then um, we can count this again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then two zero e six zero a. And then continues on for a. Um, wait. And then uh, zero a. Yeah. So I'm guessing this zero a is like it, it says that there's like ten um, in a row. Not entirely sure. Probably. 
I don't really know, but at least this is a really good exercise to kind of just look at this. And uh, if anyone can tell me like exactly what each, each of this, uh, each of these like fights means, then uh, I'll give you a firm handshake in fall when I, when I, when we see each other in person. Uh, but I have no idea what most of this means, but we don't need to know because there's a really cool uh, tool that can help us do it. And it's called SMB tile editor and it is right here. So, yeah, so it opens up the, um, so I just opened up the file and now I can go in and I can just like, I can select a sprite to use and then I can just draw. And um, yeah, and so if I wanted, I could save this and then, um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> and then now that becomes like the, the data. And you know what, let's actually go and save it. Um, this uh, software is a little bit hard to use, so, yeah, full full attention, everyone. So um, this one, the software is bugged to where if you try to go and save it, it'll say the title data exceeds the size limit, even when it really shouldn't exceed the size limit. Uh, if you don't edit anything, it'll still say it, it exceeds the size limit. So uh, yeah, kind of kind of unfortunate. So what you got to do is unfortunately go and delete um, just a, a bunch of stuff before you can um, before you can even like. Uh, like start editing it. So unfortunately, yeah, got to delete a bunch of stuff. And yeah, let's try it now. Yeah, so um, so step one is you have to click hex output. And hex output kind of like compiles the data and makes it makes this wonderful table that will be put into the game. And then once you do that, then you have to click save ROM and just click OK. And then now you finish. So now if we open this up, yay. Yeah, so the software is really easy to use. and. Um. How many, how many, uh, how much do we have to delete first? Can it just be one, one tile? Uh, I'm not sure. It's okay. you can do like a trial and error thing. You can try right. like adding a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But so I made SBI triple bros. It is a little bit hard to like get it because you're just so limited to all these tiles. Like, look, I, I couldn't actually get the E to be the correct shadow, but I, I did my best. I made it the B shadow instead. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Okay. I think that's. That's all. Oh, yeah. Another quick note. So if you're really interested in video game hacking, um, unfortunately, this is the final class. Maybe, um, I don't know, you want to continue it, though. So here's a really, really awesome guide. It's the definitive guide to exploring file formats. And anytime anyone is ever like, like, oh, my God, like if they put on Reddit or something or anywhere, they're like, oh, my gosh, like I really want to learn how to like hack some video games. Boom, they instantly get sent this. They're like, don't even talk to me until you've read the DGTEFF, uh, which is this massive document that talks about a bunch of stuff. And we've actually gone over a large portion of this already. Um, yeah, we've talked about, um, yeah, we've talked about uh, uh, bytes and file offsets. Um, we'll be talking about that later. Uh, we've talked about unsigned signed numbers. We've talked about um, yeah, file offset header tags. That's when like you have like the, the patch, like the file starts with, with like the word patch, um, bitwise operations. Yeah, so we've actually gone over a big portion of this. Um, we did not go over uh, encryption or compression. And um, yeah, so lot, lots of really cool stuff in here. Highly recommend that you uh, read through it if this is interesting to you. If it's not interesting to you, then, uh, don't read it. All right.